And here in Epping Forest, in Essex, is where I get my daily dose of the outdoors. The woods, the birds, the sounds, even the air, it's all been a lifeline for me. While I grew up in the countryside of Jamaica, climbing trees and exploring, life changed when I came to inner city London. I was surrounded by gang culture and became the victim of both knife and gun crime. Everything changed for me when I came face to face with a man with a gun. He pulled the trigger twice, but thankfully nothing came out. It misfired both times. I needed to get out of this lifestyle and that's when I turned to nature. Finding solace, exploring the landscapes of the UK and beyond. Since then, I've shared my love of nature with others from my community. Taking young people out of the inner city and giving them a chance to explore the beautiful green spaces we have here in the UK. Yet, it's clear that many black and minority ethnic people who already live in our rural areas can sometimes feel unwelcome. The news coverage of the recent Black Lives Matter protests concentrated mostly on our cities, but there were other voices too. To this day on the streets in 2020, we still have Morris dancers in blackface. We still have gollywog um, toys sold in shops, the ignorant comments, so things such as, we are family slaves. I've suffered quite a lot, sorry. Oh. I've suffered quite oh. a lot. <laughs> Oh, I've suffered quite a lot with um, like the racist abuse and like the threats, and that's been difficult. Um, but I think it's kind of been like a motivation to kind of make sure that we can highlight this movement and kind of express like the importance of it um, and you know, the kind of the message that we're trying to get across. When I talk to people from the black and minority ethnic community, it's clear that they don't view the UK countryside as somewhere that's for them. It's not theirs. They don't belong there. And I want to find out why. Warren and Blackburn. As it happens, I am not the only one. 